What's up, buddy? How you doing today? I'm doing pretty good, man. Another day in paradise. How does it feel to be on the other side of the mic, you know, with your podcast and everything? Um, I guess at this point it's gotten, it's gotten easier. So this side, that side, but I mean, I guess the, the glitz and the glam isn't always on me. So now I guess, like you're saying, being on the other side, it's pretty cool. Uh, it's progress. It's called progress. <laughs> progress. My friend. Um, so where are you from, my dude? Um, I'm from Las Vegas, Nevada. Nice. Born What's and the raised. Name? Uh, what's the name? Uh, the Have Nots. Nice. Um, you said born and raised. What school did you graduate? Uh, I didn't graduate, uh, but I went to Valley uh, GED out of Adult Ed. No, that's all so, good. Um, did you start doing art at a young age in school and stuff like that, or did it pick up later on? Uh, no, nah, man. I've been, I've been an artist since I was a little kid, bro. Uh, back in the day, they used to have JC State Fairs here, and they had the pumpkin contest. I won two years in a row. Carving? Pumpkin That's carving sick, time. bro. That's yeah, awesome. two years in a row, bro. How old were you? Ups. I was five and six, bro. Okay. Five and six. So, I mean, I've been doing art since I was a little kid. Marvel, all the X-Men. I used to draw those guys all the time. So When's, When did you start, uh, you know, instead of just drawing, when did you start actually going out and trying to put something on a wall? Um, I think... Uh, like I said, I was drawing the Marvel and stuff as I got a little bit older. Uh, the culture that I was around, a lot of the Chicano culture, Latin culture, spider webs, low riders. I started doing that. And then somebody was like, guess what? We could tag on the wall, too. And I was like, oh, all right. So started to that was about sixth grade. What, how was the transition as far as from paper to the wall? Uh, they both look like crap. Was no, it a re <laughs> did you have to relearn everything? Was it like like learning picking up a whole new pencil? Um yeah, I mean at first I just thought I was always doing something cool. Uh, until later on when somebody's like, hey bro, it looks like crap. And I was like, oh, does it for real? You know, you get offended, but I think sometimes there's people that you can accept that from, and then sometimes there's people you can't accept that from. So and I guess in that situation with somebody that you can accept it from because I was like, I want to be like that guy. Did you have anybody take you under your wing and like, or take them under, take you under their wing? I mean, um, well, I got an older brother, um, rest in peace, but I've always learned to like, kind of be my own man. So, okay. um, yeah, I did somebody, I wouldn't say they took me under their wing, uh, but I've always made myself equal to any, anybody that I was always around. Uh, and it doesn't necessarily mean like artistic wise. I just mean like, I never felt like the little homie. If, you know, so when people say it took me under the wing, like, whoa, bro, you didn't take me under your wing. So. All right. Um, with that, do you do art as a career? Do you, or is it, has it just always been more of just a passion? Have you been trying to transition that into a career? Um, I think my mindset was wrong for plenty of years. My okay. mindset was kill, kill, kill the streets. And why are these guys painting for money? And, you know, or this and that. Uh, I just had to change my mindset to go. I haven't worked in almost a year and it's all been artwork that I've been doing. I ain't got a job, but I'm working. How does that feel? <laughs> um, it's hard, bro. It's still a roller coaster because uh, it's you crazy. Have, you're your own manager, your own HR. Your own, you have bro. to pay yourself. You have to make sure everything's on time. Everything. If your right. check ain't on time, you can't yell at somebody. You got to right, yell at right, yourself. Right. Uh, I mean, I'm at the point where my daughter, uh, I tell my daughter and I talk to my daughter about things and I'm like, I need some, I need a manager. She goes, I want to be your manager, dad. I'm like, well, do you know what that entails? I don't even know what it fully entails, but as far as putting my stuff on social media, uh, you know, hey, when I tell you to send over my resume to these people who want some artistic, uh, you know what I mean? Like she has to be on that. So we've been kind of like in this limbo of really trying to put my daughter on and I but like with, how with what you just said, right? There are so many layers to this, but you're chasing those layers. What changed? What made you actually want to start having a this as a career instead of something that was more of a passion? Um, I think it came to the point where I said, why am I working for somebody else and I'm not using my I'm not using the gift that I was having to give. My gift is being able to draw or be artistic. I mean, if we we're gonna sculpt something, even though I don't know how to sculpt, I'd probably make something pretty badass. Just because I'm artistic all around, you know what I mean? I'm I'm not 
the top notch of all around, but just because I'm so artistic, I I question myself, why was I doing something else? Why was I doing construction, busting my ass every day? So I don't need to cuss, but. No, you're good. How, um, um, with that, you know, you say you did construction and stuff like, I know with construction, you have to tape, you have to do this. You need a perfect line, perfect this, perfect that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Does that perfectiveness, when you went to paint, was it hard to almost not be perfect? Um, I'm a perfectionist. I'm OCD. Um, when I did construction, I went from being a laborer and a helper to boom, I'm a foreman. Just because I was always trying to be so pristine, always trying to be perfect. I, I figured I knew what the bosses wanted. Now I become a boss. And then I'm having to tell other guys. And you know what? I feel like sometimes I'm hard on guys that are underneath me because I want them to be as great as me or as great as what they, I know they can be because they're doing the job good. But just relax, man. You know, life's not too. So with that, you say you did that in construction. Have you right. transitioned that with Graffiti Park? Have you started to like, you know, see somebody doing something, you say something, help Absolutely. them out? I'm, I'm not going to shut up. I am. <laughs> uh, and it's not because oh, I'm better than you, or I'm this, or I'm that. It's like, we're just trying to get everybody up to par. And if you're creative and you have this side of you where you're choosing to go this avenue, I've been spray painting, like I said, since sixth grade, bro. You know, I've been drawing since before that. So, I mean, there's somewhat, I, I, I somewhat have a degree. <laughs> if there was a degree, I would have one in this, so. That's what's up. Um, so, you know, something Daniel always likes me to ask is what does Graffiti Park mean to you? What has it helped you achieve? And I like that question. Um, the answer to that would be the competition that just passed was Community United. Um, I, apparently not a lot of people joined that competition, but the competition or, 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 or what it meant to be Community United is like, we're out there painting these schools. We're out there. Um, we're out there painting these schools, and it allows for older generation, younger generation, peers to all come together, and we come together and we paint these schools and we paint paint uh, these murals. And some kid who's in fourth grade, ten years from now, could be like, "I remember you. You painted our school." And and I think that's somewhat of like what graffiti park is man it, it really it's because like i mentioned in the in the class that we had earlier like um 20 years ago us painting these schools would have never been there it would have never happened so no, this dan different. and dan hadn't put something together like that and when i got wind of it i was like i want to be there and i every opportunity that i could be at any one of those schools i've been there bro I've been so there. like with graffiti park i've noticed like you know sometimes they'll some of the schools are brand new, you know, they <laughs> literally aren't even open yet. You yeah. know, I think we did one school that wasn't even open yet. They were doing their first year. And then, you know, you've also done a school that's been open since you were a kid. Yeah. yeah. So probably my parents, <laughs> you know, I've noticed, you know, so you have like a blank wall and then you have a wall. What's the oldest piece of artwork that you think you've covered? So like, you know, uh, was the was it on the wall for 20 years, 50 years, and then you covered it? So now you think your piece might be there for 20, 50 years? Um, I haven't really covered any pieces Okay. to that nature. Um, I haven't really covered any other buddy else's artwork. I've revamped. Okay, so, I like that, artwork. I like that. I revamped some where I just gave it a touch up, facelift. That's cool. You know, I left it kind of the way it was. So let's um, talk about that. Was it lettering? What was it? Um, It was at a... Uh, Actually, it, it wasn't quite through this foundation, but uh, ended up being at a school doing something. Um, and it was just a horse on the wall. And just, I think, from where the sun hit it. But you brought life back to and it. And I just brought life back to it. I just basically hit it with the same colors, maybe added a little extra flair to it. But it was, still wasn't my artwork. It, it was somebody else's artwork that I just revamped. But it's nice because now, you know, you can step back. It gives a new positive energy to that room saying, you right, know. Right, right. You know. Um, you know, what does Graffiti Park, they, you know, as a whole, what do you imagine it becoming? I think it's just limitless, really, bro. I mean, uh, I guess I can say this, bro. I'm, I'm rocking the Graffiti Park hat. Um, there's been a lot of probably shots fired, maybe, in the beginning of a lot of this stuff. 
Um, I've got reached out to and been like, hey, bro, why are you going to condone to these guys or whatnot? And I said, bro, if you don't see it for what it is, then I don't know what to tell you. You, you know, I'm my own person. I'm going to do what I want. I see like a bigger picture. I seen that there was like some light at the end of this tunnel to where Graffiti Park was way more than whatever the heck they were talking about. And it's not to like hate on anybody else or any of that. I, I'm just talking about in general. Uh, like I, I'm just talking about in general as far as it's really come a long way, bro. I think this is two, maybe going on three years or we're breaking that threshold. Um, from school to school to school to school to school. I mean, we just went to Pennsylvania, bro. We was out in Pennsylvania. How was that? YMCA. Man, that was took a couple crazy, artists, so how bro, was that? man. Like, um, it was surreal, bro. Uh, last year I was in Miami. Uh, this year I was in Pennsylvania. Uh, I wasn't in Miami with Graffiti Park, but I mean, I had Graffiti Park stickers and I'm posting them up. What's up, brother? So I I'm all about the cause. I'm, I'm, I'm Team Graffiti Park, bro. So you know, up, if anybody's man? got something to say, just letting them know I'm Team Graffiti Park for sure. Yeah, hell yeah, dude. Let's talk more about like this piece that's sitting behind you, you know? <laughs> that's something you did. So, uh, yeah. you know, we I... talked today during the class, we talked about, you know, bringing your black book or bringing a sketch. Did you bring a sketch? To this? No. No. Okay. <laughs> was this something uh, you just had in your head? Don't put me on blast. <laughs> um, uh, you know what? Um, I've been drawing for so long. Doesn't mean I just came out of blue with this. Um, inspired by Homeboy's piece over there. Um, I seen what he was doing and I'm like, oh, I like that. I kind of like that idea. That, like, okay. And, gave so, you like so, and a... it gave me some uh, uh, Orient style. So I said, oh, I like I like that. And, you know, I asked Daniel, what? Well, well, What's the thing? What do you want it to be? All right, give me a couple seconds. You know, um, I'm, uh, everything I draw isn't necessarily just straight off the top. It's not. A lot of things that I draw, I'm looking for references, but it goes back to my black book. I'm looking through my references. I'm looking at things that I might have screenshotted. Oh, I like that. Let me, let me try to implement that. So it's almost so, like a seed that grows in your brain. Exactly. I like so that. once I found the seed that I wanted and it grew in my brain, uh, I started to formulate this and I'm like, well, I'm going to do a circle though. Excuse me. I knew I was going to do a circle that I knew. And I just found the center point and I used a string and I made a circle. Um, I think what I had going on, I think the other homie here kind of seen it and he's like, Hey, well, I'm going to build mine up to yours and we'll, we'll make it mesh. So, and then, you know, of course I got to add my calligraphy. I had my calligraphy. There's my name up there. There's that, you know, so, um, Sometimes when you've been doing it this long, you can come up with that seed on the spot and figure out what it is you want. Yeah, so. it's crazy how you two have formed the art to almost match each other off, off the energy. Right, yeah, like yeah. Like your petals are literally flowing into his. <laughs> no, absolutely. So. And that was the concept. Uh, I think we kind of both started a sketch out at the same day. I think he skipped a day. I came back, finished mine, and he just finished it off. So I didn't even finish it. I didn't even see him finish what he did up until mine until like two months later. Came back and I was like, oh, yeah, that's tight. That's what's up. So, so it all worked together, man. Nice. Um, I've noticed like you don't really do a lot of, you know, this. You do a lot of lettering. That's what you're really good at. So like when you say you know, construction made you someone of a perfectionist, bro, I've seen your lettering. It, it takes that perfection attitude. So when you're attacking your lettering, is it, you just like, I see, I, I hear you say, it's like, you know, go with it. You know, you have to believe in yourself. So how did you build that? Was it just from writing in the books? Is that how you started to believe that you could just <laughs> okay, do it? This is how you want to know why. Look, uh, I, I just got a rosary from the homie. I grew up, Catholic, not that it matters or doesn't matter. My grandma was, uh, she was uh, in the covenant. She was going to be a nun. When she was going to be a nun, she used to have to draw circles on a paper like this with a wrist over and over and over and over and over. Uh, she ended up getting pulled out of the covenant, whatever. Fast forward to when I was a kid, my grandma would make me write my name over and over and over and over in a notebook, in a spiral notebook. So I would literally have notebooks of my name in cursive over and over and over, bro, from front to back. So a lot of my confidence came from that. Did you did you just do the same thing over and over, or did my you name. keep changing Angela. it nope. every I, time you wrote it? I know I would write my name in cursive. No, so, I mean like, was it the same cursive every time, or did you always try to change uh, it? 
It wasn't until later on. Okay. It wasn't until later on that that I started to see other styles and stuff to that nature. So so it was definitely, uh, it was basic. And you know the sad part is, they don't even teach cursive no more. They don't even teach cursive no more. So my years of putting it in over and over and over that my grandma put on me and put on me to write my name legible and have legible writing. Now it doesn't even matter. But it does to you. Right. Well, I'm, I'm part of the obsolete. Exactly. You know what I mean? So that's so, what's cool about it is you yeah. actually took something that a lot of people are like, why the fuck we need this? I remember when I was in school, I was like, why that? We don't need this. Yeah, we don't need it. So, we don't need yeah. this. Like, uh, and, You know, even to this day, like I give my kids, I'll be like, oh, let me write you in cursive. Um, I went on a vacation for a while, so to speak, and uh, I would purposely write letters in cursive. And so my kids would have to be like, what does this say? Well, you're going to have to figure it out. <laughs> that, I like that. It's like code. You know? Yeah, you're so. pushing them to, you know, push yeah. their knowledge. I, I dig that. So, you know, I, your father, how many kids do you have, my dude? Oh, uh, man, I got six kids, bro. Cool. How's right. that? Being a, a, as a father, you're a teacher every day. So how is that? Um, Stressful. <laughs> <laughs> um, You know, they got books and shit about it. But like, honestly, man, it varies. So, you know, my my oldest kid might have to have this type of treatment and my youngest kid might have to have that type of treatment. So do you not- think like uh, art kind of helped you when it came to preparing for kids and stuff like that? No, no, <laughs> nothing. No, no, I don't think uh, I, I mean, sad to say, I wasn't even when I did have my first kid, I was still like, let's go run the streets. OK, you, you know what I mean? It didn't come till later on. Like and it goes with the art things like my mindset had to change. My mindset was was this, uh, re- I got my, my face tatted. You know, why'd you do that, man? Or da, 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 da. Well, why not? You know, well, for me, like, I'm already at this point in the stage of my life where, like, I understand where I'm at. I wouldn't suggest the little homie to go and get his face blasted. Uh, I would, if they wanted me to blast it, I'd be like, nah, w- wait, you know Does that I mean? motivate you now? Like you say, you don't have a, you have your own career. Does that push you every day? Like, I have to do this. I have to, I have to, man. I have to do it all the time. I. I and you know what? There's going to be ups and downs, though. It's crazy. This month, I've been busy every single month, bro. This month is like, and I'm like, what am I going to do? Oh, so I took on a couple gigs that are just more sketch gigs, more like uh, you want a logo, you know, versus actually painting on the wall. So, but I mean, in the past month, I think I did, I did two, two of the schools. I did, um, I did a Fresa skate shop on Main Street. Uh, I did that, which I was some of the PowerPoint on there showing that's that new skate shop, right? Correct. The new skate it's shop. It's the one with the roller blades with the roller derby. Bro, that roller. thing is so sick. We literally yeah. went on opening day. I was there, bro. Oh, that's dope. I was I there. I was you. in the back. I was in the oh, club. Oh, I didn't see you. Yeah, we yeah, went on there. opening day. We went on first Friday. That's yeah, 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 yeah. I was there. Yeah, yeah, I was there. But yeah, I painted that, man. Um, and that I looked pa- really good. Though. Yeah. And I painted that like, you know, I am the have nots. Uh, the have nots is actually not just so much me. It is derived of a couple guys. So a lot of people don't know that. But, it, you know, I think I've just taken it and ran with it further than the other guys. What does the have nots mean to you? Um, You know, um. I've always been the outcast. I've always been looked at a little bit different, you know. Um, so I'm a have not. I'm not. I'm somebody that you'd rather not have around. So. <laughs> so let's talk about the shirt real quick, and then we'll get out of here. Uh, uh, What's two you know, cents, man. Uh, it's two cents. Two cents podcast, man. Two cents. You know what I mean? Me and my boy, the Dazed Age, man. Shout out to the Dazed Age. That dude kills it. He's kind of like our boy Sean right here, man. He puts together. He's in the videos with us. He does everything with us, and I have caught dialogue with him. But outside of that, behind the scene, man, that dude is editing, chopping, posting, doing all of those things, man. So every chance I get to shout that dude out, man, I shout him out, man. And, you know, uh, I think Two Cents is both of us and it takes both of us. And uh, we're just trying to make it out there, man. If you guys ever want to listen on Spotify, Two Cents Podcast on IG, we go live every Thursday. All right. Well, man, I wanted to say, you know, from Graffiti Park, we appreciate you coming down and talking with us.